Good evening, ladies and menfolk. Welcome to episode 62 of Word Ninjas Live. We actually have everyone tonight, or at least our regular members. I am your instigator of literary productivity and insanity lately, Charles. And joining me is Will. Hello. And Justin. Uh, hi. And Calvin. What they said. All right. This is a plethora of random things we're doing tonight because it's kind of a potluck, actually. That was the term I was trying to think of because everyone's contributed tonight. Hooray! It wasn't all just me. Yay. Which is good. Maybe. We we'll, shall we'll, see. We'll see. I start things off by saying, yay, everyone contributed. We'll see how I feel by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> and episode then, eight. All right, it, nobody's contributing episode. anymore, ever. <laughs> That's it. 62 is the last episode we're ever having. Oh. But before we see if this is truly the end, let's actually have the show. So we have some talkie points for this week. And they're all they're kind of all across the board for various reasons. But because I'm the boss man, I'm gonna kick things off with my topic. And mine was what books or classes have noticeably affected your writing style and or writing interests? And I guess by extension, do such things noticeably affect your writing style and or writing interests? Because that is a possibility. Although I would be very surprised. Uh, the last thing you said got kind of warbly, so... Yep. That's probably because my Wi-Fi has been grumpy lately. Ah. Uh, basically, the topic was, what books or classes have noticeably affected your writing style and or writing interests? And someone else talk. That is the opposite of not talk. Op opposite of talking. I'm just going to pick on someone then, once I scroll over, because people are being lazy. Sorry, I had technical difficulties. Yeah, I think maybe this is a Google issue and not a particular Wi-Fi issue, because I too have been having issues today. No, I just accidentally closed the tab. Oh. That's I was different. blaming my own misclick on technical difficulties. <laughs> Uh, I heard Will speak first, so <laughs> he gets nominated. What was the question? Books or classes have noticeably affected... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, That's your answer? Just yeah? <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> you never heard of that book? Yeah, 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 bye. Yeah, yeah. I thought there were four yeahs in that title. No, 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 no that's the it. sequel. Uh, that one wasn't as good. <laughs> All right. Um, I honestly don't know. I would probably, in a sense, I could say almost every class I ever took because I was usually writing instead of paying attention in those classes. Even Calvin can attest to some of those. Of course, he says can. A couple of computer programming classes where I was not taking notes or... Was it you're like, what were you always taking notes of? There were no notes to take. I wasn't taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I was free writing. <laughs> Even the professor was impressed with all the notes you were taking. Oh yes. All those notes I was taking. <laughs> pages and pages of notes. <laughs> <laughs> but I did take a couple uh introduction to creative writing classes in college on the last the senior year that were well one of them was actually during the winter term of senior year those were pretty good helped teach me what I should be doing and I honestly don't remember the specific names of them the first one I took was just introduction to creative writing 
And I think the second one was just like the next step up from there. It was a branch off. I don't remember the specific class title, but it was a yeah, more. The names, s- uh, the names can get pretty random after yeah, just the intro. Was, so uh, the first one was pretty general. We wrote in different topics: uh, poems, prose, uh, play style different things like that. And the second one was very specifically towards actually writing in prose, writing novels or novellas. But um, they had a lot of good feedback, even from other students, because we were required to read our stuff and then have everyone criticize our stuff. Also taught us how to constructively criticize other people's work, which was important. (laughs) And then everyone promptly forgot how to do that outside of college. (laughs) I remember how to do it. (laughs) I remember the teacher going, why are wizards always in towers? And I'm like, because they are. Why are kings always in castles? (laughs) Why are dragons always in caves? They just are. (laughs) Why do CEOs always have the top corner office? (laughs) What if they work in a circular tower? How do you they have a probably just have done? the top floor. <laughs> you win this round. This entire floor is mine. <laughs> um, but that would, uh, for classes, that would probably be it. I actually took classes and I'm like, hmm, I should probably, I write a lot. I should figure out how to actually do that properly from a teacher instead of just constantly throwing words at papers and... Hoping for the best. <laughs> Basically learn all the rules first so that you, you can break them properly later. Yeah, I mean, yeah. How am I supposed to know I'm properly breaking a rule if I don't know if it's a rule to begin with? Mm. <laughs> and other than that, I would say one interest. I don't know if this really... Ap- I guess in a way it applies. I... I mean, all know I read a lot of the the legend, the Legacy of Drift by R. A. Salvatore, and I suppose it influences my writing in that I constantly have to tell myself I don't have to be as good as R. A. Salvatore, or I don't need to write the way he writes for it to still be good. I don't know if that applies, but it kind of helps me. Yeah. Remember to not write like him. It's like, well, this isn't how he would write it. Wait, that's okay. He's not the one writing it. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it influences my writing style by making sure it doesn't influence my writing style. Well, it helps make you aware of what you do and do not want to write style-wise. So I that suppose. counts. Definitely helped when I was writing that action piece that was kind of like a similar feel. And I'm like... This isn't how he writes fight scenes better than I do. But wait, that's okay. I'm not him. I'm me. I'll write them my way. Yeah, every writer has to have their own style and personality and spin on things. Otherwise, you're just duplicating someone else. And mm. most, granted, you have to do that in college classes because <laughs> professors are silly that way. But Mm. outside of academia, you do not have to do that. And you generally get chastised if you do. Mm. Definitely find your own way of writing. Mm. Yeah, I can definitely blame my college class, my first college classes. Second college, I didn't do writing classes. Wanted to, but meh. First college, my writing classes definitely affected the way I write because that's where I primarily learned what I want to write and how I want to write it. And they are entirely to blame for the entire Slash and Burn multiverse <laughs> because of one freaking writing prompt. <laughs> it was one of those, like, you have to free write for ten minutes at the beginning of the class. Here is your topic. That's where it all began. And it all went downhill from there. <laughs> but, uh, books-wise, I know that certain authors have definitely affected how I perceive certain bits of writing. Like, when I read too much Terry Pratchett, then I start getting a little too silly with some of my writing. But I at least become aware of it eventually. I think that's how Chartep was created. 
it would explain a few things. <laughs> uh, that kind of feels like an inside joke right now. <laughs> Only a two-person joke. <laughs> Those, that's the type of writing where we come up with butterflies and flutterbys, and the reasonings for both. <laughs> that was a that was a hilariously disturbing brainstorming session. We need more of those, though. I agree. Maybe when we're all gathered together in a couple weeks. Oh, that's right. Mm hmm. <laughs> Although, if we're all gathered together, we'll be recording it, so other people will probably be able to hear it as well, for better or worse. <laughs> Hold on. Oh my. <laughs> uh, I'll have more not suitable for Word Ninja's content. <laughs> hey, speaking of diabolical laughter, it's Calvin's turn. All right, so I had a lot of time to think about this, and by a lot of time, like the uh, few hours I I like mentally like turned off at work. But uh, books, not so much. Like classes, the only class that really came to mind. I don't even remember the name of it. I don't know. I don't remember much about the class, but to be fair, I don't remember much about college because I pushed uh, pushed all those memories away. <laughs> but there was one class where <clears throat> that like really like pushed me to like actually just, just sit down and start writing, and start writing st uh, writing stuff and. That was a class where I ended up writing that, um, yeah, the hacker story. So that, oh, I have to say, like, easily that one class really got me started with, like, extent, like, any like extensive writing that I can lay claim to. I still demand that you get back to that hacker story one of these years. <laughs> I would. I really would like to, and possibly work on something else that came to mind a couple of weeks ago. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll clue you guys in on that uh, in a couple of weeks. Maybe for Nano 2014, perhaps. Maybe why not? <laughs> Don't get too excited. But I wanna <laughs> continue. Well, oh, we'll see if uh, we'll see if I can get anywhere with. Character at the very least, character development. But yeah, basically, I one class, but more than anything, and you'll you'll understand that this is a recurring theme: music. You're a musician. Wait, I am. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> but like, they've been. There are like quite a few, like quite a few bands and musicians that, like even to this day, kind of shape the way I uh, not just write lyrics, but like write simple poetry too. Like top on top on the list is Incubus because of all the Incubus I've listened to since like 2001. I made a joke with a friend of mine uh, when I said. I've listened to too much Incubus in my life. And then I turned around and said, I've not listened to enough Incubus in my life. <laughs> but like listening to listening to the likes of Incubus and all the various genres of music I've uh I've uh, exposed myself to especially over the last few years really has shown me like where my strengths and weaknesses in lyrics, uh, uh, in lyrics, uh, where my strengths and weaknesses are in writing lyrics. There we go. That's proper English, right? But uh, <laughs> so I think that <clears throat> music more than anything has been my biggest you know, like writing influence. Cool. 
And hey, Justin has returned just in time for his turn, presuming that he's finished setting everything up. Mm, or not. <laughs> so while Justin figures out his technical shenanigans, we will keep on talking to give him a little bit more time. Um, question for you guys: Since mm -hmm. uh, since we're talking, since I just brought up music, any uh, any musicians or bands or any musical type people influence you guys in terms of writing? Like, has there been any bands that? have influenced any of your stories or like just put a bug in your ear while you're writing. ES Posthumous, who <laughs> is familiar for those not familiar with the name, does a lot of movie trailer music. So it's a lot of short but impactful style stuff. Mostly for action movies. Evanescence. <laughs> nice. As surprising as the might be the song uh, "Wake Me Up." Mm. Put a uh, a bug for a, actually it was a video game idea in my head. Oh. <laughs> that was years ago though. Uh, of monsters and men, little talks. Uh, there's a couple lines in the chorus that essentially sparked my entire horror novel. Ah. <laughs> Uh, and on top of that, I'd say the soundtrack to uh, Final Fantasy Advent Children sparked uh, a like an anime-style zombie apocalypse before zombie apocalypses were basically destroyed by modern media. Back before it was cool. <laughs> you zombie hipster, you. <laughs> Those drawings that I was showing you a couple days ago, those were sketches for the uh, zombie apocalypse anime book or graphic novel. If I was a better artist, it probably would have been a graphic novel, but I'm a terrible artist. Uh, I presume you're not talking to me because I don't even remotely remember this. Uh, I showed you some sketches pre-podcast a couple weeks ago. I remember those sketches. I do as well. There is uh, a, I do not. There was a hand bow. It was like a crossbow that was strapped to your wrist. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, I got nothing. So CJ doesn't pay attention to me. Great. All right. <laughs> CJ doesn't do? remember what he had for uh, lunch today, so... I had lunch? That's <laughs> news to me. <laughs> that actually wasn't a joke. I don't... Uh, I had a Snickers. Does that count? <laughs> According yeah. to the Snickers company, yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> All right, then that was my lunch. <laughs> so hopefully we've given enough time for Justin to set everything up so he can answer the first question. Yes, actually, uh, I switched from Wi-Fi to a hard connection because my Wi-Fi is the most dead a Wi-Fi could possibly be and still function. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I never really took writing classes, which is probably why I didn't do a whole lot of writing. Uh, I passed, like, there was a period of time where I was writing a lot, especially in elementary school and early middle school. And then, uh, I don't know if I told this story on the podcast before, but my brother took all everything that I ever wrote, which was in a portfolio, and one Halloween he took some Halloween glue, like uh, the latex glue, and glued them all to my desk. And then took all my makeup and painted all over them. Yep. That's impressive. He was old enough to know better. This was out of spite. <laughs> As for books, uh, listeners of the podcast know that I basically, for the first 20 years of my life, only read Stephen King. Uh, so On Writing was obviously on that list of books that I read. Uh, I've been reading through the Silmarillion, which is helping me kind of get into the zone and into the mindset of how to set up like a really epic uh, fantasy style uh, novel from the ground up, uh, which is cool. And then I also picked up this. There's an MIT class. Uh, I'm going to get off camera and go grab the book real quick. This Wait, might not have been MIT, mirror, so. but uh, course, maybe it was Coursera or something. But anyways, there is a, uh, a class on 
short stories. It might have been part of the creative writing course, but since it was an online class, but it was only like, oh, here's all the material, but there's no teacher <laughs> and no lecture, so and no one could critique your work. So they are like, oh, you should buy this book. And so I did. It's called The Art of the Short Story. I don't know if this is mirrored or showing correctly on the screen. No, it shows. Okay, good. And this has a ton of short stories from, you know, famous authors and, and otherwise notable works. And what they do is they provide the short story, and then sometimes they get the author's perspective on that short story, sort of oh, like a, cool. not really an interview per se, but a lot of information, like maybe an afterthought essay that they wrote. And sometimes there's like a synopsis and some stuff to think about. Uh, it's a really cool book. And I've been going through some of it and reading some of the uh, short stories. And a lot of the short stories are so varied and so different that it, it kind of shows you that you don't really have to go through the mainstream to tell your story. You could basically do anything as long as you have compelling, you know, uh, plot and characters and whatnot, that there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, so I highly recommend that book. Again, it's The Art of the Short Story. 52 great authors, their best short fiction, and their insights on writing. Cool. And it's published by Pearson and Logman. Uh, besides those two things, I uh, haven't taken any classes yet. I'm planning on signing up uh, uh, to some critiquing sites, uh, including some subreddits that do critiquing. Hmm. Because I enjoy critiquing work, and I'm pretty decent at critiquing, I'd say. I don't know if somebody can be good or bad at critiquing, but I kind of provide some insight of what I think and what a common reader might think. You know, my old reality man moniker kind of comes through for that. Uh, and I kind of give suggestions about pacing and stuff. And I'm also planning on maybe taking the, what is it, the Gotham Writers mm -hmm. class? Yeah. I don't remember what it's called. But uh, I'm Gotham planning on taking one of one. those when I'm not in a uh, work suck, which is becoming more and more rare. Mm -hmm. But we usually have a pretty good break in the after Christmas and New Year's. So maybe next year I'll take it. Maybe in the spring. It'd be cool to get some uh, get some actual writing done that somebody else is going to read at some point. If I have not spontaneously combusted before, then I would like to join you on that because I've been meaning to do one of their workshops for a while now. Okay, yeah. We can uh, we can go in on it. I'll, I'll keep you posted. I'm going to do some research on it later. So. All right. But in the meantime, that we've probably wrapped up this talkie point. And guess whose talking point is next on the list? Uh, are oh, you doing an order? Cameras. Justin can roll right with it. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to skip ahead. What? I'm, going to, I'm going to attempt to screen share this as well. I have a, a website in the highlights reel. Uh, let's oh see my. if I can do this correctly. The one who talks about being focused is multitasking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what is going on here? I know, it doesn't make any sense. Hold on, let me get back to the Google uh, screen share. Uh, entire screen, sure. I don't have any porn open right now. <laughs> And quick peek at the show notes and the website. Can people oh, see yeah. my screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, Machines of Loving Grace, which is a, uh, a big repository of uh, typewriter information. And it's at 7ELS.net slash typewriters. I'm not sure how to specifically pronounce that, but seven, the word 7ELS.net. I don't know if it's 7Ls or whatever. But anyways, so uh, I recently decided that I hated staring at a screen while I'm writing. And my handwriting is so terrible that I don't want to write on paper. I've tried that many, many times, and it always comes out crappy. And on top of that, I also want to have a hard copy, uh, something that I'd be able to you know, scan into the computer 
and it actually maybe read the text that I typed out. <laughs> so I could have a soft copy as well. So anyways, I went on this, uh, CJ knows uh, that I went on this typewriter kick for about a week, just researching the crap out of typewriters. <laughs> and this website was one of the websites that helped me choose which typewriter I wanted. They had a whole lot of information in here, uh, different brands, and if you click on a brand name, I'm going to do Royals because that's the typewriter I chose ultimately. They kind of go through, you know, from start to finish what their typewriters were and how they evolved. Uh, they have little pieces of history uh, built into the site. Uh, as uh, They also have serial numbers and, you know, all sorts of great information. I eventually ended up doing what a lot of people do, it turns out, because it's one of the most common uh, typewriters post-World War II, is the... Hold on, coming down. There the Royal is. Quiet Deluxe, which you is actually the you. Royal mm -hmm. Deluxe and the Quiet something, the standard Quiet or something. But they oh, basically ended up merging into the Royal Quiet Deluxe over time. Mm -hmm. And so that's the one I ended up getting. I just like the look of it. Uh, I really wanted a portable typewriter. I didn't want a big BV typewriter. Uh, I like the two-tone, and I like the mechanical function of it. So I went on eBay and uh, accidentally bought one and then had to explain to my wife why $80 was gone from our account for no reason. Uh, oops, that's awkward. Uh, and in any case, this conversation about typewriters will probably leak into next week as well because uh, the typewriter's coming in tomorrow, and I'm super excited. I had two dreams about typewriters last night. Um, I'm going to stop screen sharing. And uh, let's talk about typewriters as my talking point. I'm rather amused that you ended up getting the exact same one that we've been using at our conventions. <laughs> that that was purely by accident after researching sure. basically every typewriter that existed. Yeah, yeah. There sure. were a couple uh, Smith Coronas that I liked and a couple Remingtons that I liked, but I ended up doing the, uh, the Royal. And... Uh, you know, went on Reddit and found out, you know, lots of information. I was going to get one of the original uh, Royal typewriters, but they are not in great working condition because they're so common that they are basically treated like garbage. Yeah, but, they haven't really held up well. No, but the Quiet Deluxes are revered enough where you can and common enough where you can still get one on the cheap that's in pretty good condition, mm. uh, at least I hope. We'll see what happens next week. I'll give you a full update on my typewriter adventures. <laughs> uh, but I'm super excited, and uh, I'll share another website next week, which will bring my typewriting abilities to the next level. And no uh, most of you know what website I'm talking about, but I'm going to, you know, uh, cliffhanger for next week. <laughs> so, yeah, typewriters are pretty entertaining. They've been a lot of fun at conventions just to see how different people react and how different ages react to it <laughs> and the signs that we have to go with it. Mm -hmm. I've tried doing, I tried using it for a nano, but it's hard to use it at a cafe or a library <laughs> because even the Quiet Deluxe has a certain amount of noise associated with it. But, uh... What was it? Whatever year Hurricane Sandy was, I used it for the first week straight because we didn't have power for 10 days, so I kind of needed something to write on. And I think, yeah, I used the, the Quiet Deluxe for that one, and it handled marvelously. I don't really like the Model O that I have because it needs extensive cleaning. <laughs> yeah, the, the Model O was another one that was extremely common. I think... Uh... Yeah. It was the most common made pre-World War II. Yeah, that's one of the earlier models. But uh, ours, it works fine. It's just flaking, so it needs a proper cleaning. And I refuse to even acknowledge the fact that I have a Smith Corona Galaxy 2, I think it is, because that thing is a beast. Yeah, that thing is massive. And I think one of the keys is stuck. I haven't had the time to give it the proper attention to fix it up. I want to buy a second keyboard, I mean a uh, typewriter, and uh, take it completely apart, piece by piece. Learn about it, 
figure out how it works, and then maybe if I need to repair the one that I have, mm-hmm. I can use it for spare. Use the other one for spare parts. And I think it'd be cool to just learn about that. How the you know I'm an engineer as well as my day job, and uh, so that mechanical functioning, everything just really interests me. So it'll be fun to learn about that. Um, I really wanted a typewriter that had the viewable type. Uh, some of the most of the older typewriters, the ribbon didn't raise when it hit the uh, mm-hmm. hit the platen. How do you pronounce that? The roll. Yeah, I thought platen. it was the platen. Okay, so you couldn't see the first line that you typed at all until you did a carriage return or scrolled up your sheet, uh, and then later they developed the uh, raising of the uh, of the ink sh- strip. Uh, which makes it so that it has like a dual action where the ink strip raises up and then the key pounds it, and then mm-hmm. it goes back down. Uh, and that's a a pretty crazy mechanical process that it does just by hitting a single button. So I definitely want to tear down this thing and see how all the levers and the springs and everything's hooked together. I'm I'm probably more excited about this typewriter than I have any right to be. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as soon as I get it, I'm probably going to hate it and say, this is awful, why to I do this? <laughs> Well, if you ever learn how to actually properly clean one, I'd be interested in learning more. There's a nice cleaning guide that I found on Reddit where they found an old manual for uh, typewriter maintenance that goes through, like, everything. Hmm. So maybe I'll, be uh, nice. maybe I'll link that over to you or share it next week. The only primary knowledge I've learned of how to clean the typewriter is, for the love of all that is holy, do not use WD-40. <laughs> no, that no, you don't want to do that. WD-40 does is not actually a proper lubricant that you should use for any reason. It it actually makes most joints worse because it it makes it it's a water based, so it ends up like evaporating really quickly and making squeaky joints even squeakier. Mm. I'm curious why it's so prevalent and known if it's so ineffective. Marketing. They're the duct tape of oils. <laughs> As one who works for one of those marketing companies, I apologize for nothing. <laughs> uh, but it, it's funny, they didn't have a lot of cleaners back then, especially cleaners that didn't completely destroy everything that wasn't metal. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the ways that they used to clean typewriters was they would just take pure gasoline, and then Ooh. dip the typewriter entirely in the gasoline. Oh, God. Uh, now, I don't recommend you anyone doing that. We have much better solvents out there that will work fine. Um, but there are gas prices today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I hear carb cleaner works really great, but it basically melts anything that isn't metal, so you have to be extremely careful. But anyways, we'll get into the fun typewriter stuff. Uh, I'm sure I'll be bantering about it all next week as well. And this can be a, this can be our theme for October before yep. Nano kicks off. Mm-hmm. I do plan on using this for Nano if I even get to do Nano, uh, but we'll get to that later during the highs and lows. <laughs> <laughs> well, now the two of us have rambled on enough about the typewriters that we have or will be having. Does anyone else want to chime in? even if it's saying stop talking about typewriters? Uh, that website might be useful for me for writing purposes is research, having a character who would love to use typewriters. <laughs> if That's your character all. wants a typewriter, I have two to spare. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a real typewriter. I just need a model for fictional purposes. <laughs> Everybody needs a typewriter. <laughs> the, what are they? The Olivia's look really cool. I don't remember. Uh, I thought it, I thought there was an R at the end of them. Olivetti. Olivetti. Oh, Olivetti. Oh. Something that? like that. Uh, no, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Maybe it was the Olivers. Yeah, the Oliver typewriters look really funky. Uh, Oliver number three. I'm going to screen share this again. Sorry, everybody. I'll I'm super up. excited about typewriters there you right go. now. Now I'm all curious. 
What the hell is that monstrosity? Exactly. That looks awesome. <clears throat> and that looks I kind of want to get one of these just to take it apart. Well, that's different. Do the keys come in from the side? That's what it looks like. Uh, let me see. This deserves to be on a steampunk airship or something. <laughs> <laughs> Two downstroke type bar towers. So they stroke down instead of up. Hmm. Weird. Yes. And they had large print type, which was used for larger typeface meant to mimic the font of books and newspapers. Huh. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. I wonder... I'd be impressed, but I'm pretty doubtful if this site has uh, the attempts for Chinese typewriters. Will hilarity ensue, or do they actually do something interesting? Well, because of the uh, all the kanji and characters that they need, the attempts uh, of making one have been ridiculous. Oh, they'd have to do uh, do it by strokes. That would yeah. be upsetting. There have been some interesting attempts and trials, but I'm not seeing it in their Others tab. Yeah, this one I did see a rotary one, one though. <laughs> the hell is that thing? <laughs> oh, did you see the spherical ones? The one, Some of the first typewriters? That was pretty cool. Instead of, uh, instead of the keys being like in a keyboard style, it basically wrapped around a dome and you would have to hit buttons from different angles. Yeah, they had one in the Others tab, and now I can't find it. There it is. The Keaton Music Typewriter. That's just silly looking. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Typewriters are amusing. Yes, I can't wait to be totally sick of typewriters in another week. <laughs> Imagine trying to hack one so they can it can be set up for Dvorak rather than QWERTY. There were a couple in here that were set up for some of the German typewriters hmm. have a different. They don't have QWERTY. They have uh, something else. I don't remember what it is. Something uh, German. Yeah. Presumably. All right. Oh, wrong tab. Wrong window. There we go. Oh, hey. The next topic is wills. Yes, it is, isn't it? It is. Take it away. It's more just of a, a question that popped into my head. Uh, do you write what you read? By that I mean, do you typically write in the same genre that you prefer to read in, or do you read one genre more so, but write in a different genre? For example, I myself read a lot of fantasy stuff or science fiction stuff, very fantastical stuff. Again, the legacy of Drist, which is a whole magic, uh, not magic, the gathering, um... Dungeons and Dragons theme. You can get Magic the Gathering novels, though. They do have literature. For Those the, things are weird, though. I haven't read any of it, but they've yeah. got their whole own set of lore. All you're missing is a headache. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I've already got one of those, so... <laughs> I have the compendiums for like the Artifacts series in Magic the Gathering. Those things are weird. Like, I read that. I've read some Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park, The Lost World, The Andromeda Strain, various things like that. I don't write that stuff, typically. Anyone who's even looked at Roommate and gotten past the adult content would basically see that it's basically a romantic relationship story or a true-to-life story about relationships. There's not all that much really fantastical about it. So I don't typically write what I read, which is weird, but then maybe not. I don't know. 
Uh, I'm kind of an anomaly. Well, that's normal. But <laughs> I read everything, and I do not write everything. I mean, I'll go from sci-fi to fantasy to reference to manga to light novel to whatever the hell else is in there, lit fic, <laughs> classics, stuff that no one should ever even know exists. <laughs> but my writing is primarily sci-fi or reference. I haven't really played around with fantasy because that's how Chartep was created, and we don't need to go down that road ever again. <laughs> or do we? Mm. You might have to because off the air at least I want to know about this character because I've not heard of this before. Oh yeah, fair enough, but on air, not happening. We'll do that later. Yeah. Maybe yeah. NSFWN listeners will learn more. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do not write what I read because I read too much. <laughs> yeah, for me, for longer stuff, I, I mean, as everyone knows, I only read horror, mostly. But I've read a few fantasy things, and, you know, I've read stuff here and there. I, I should give myself a little bit more credit. I've read a lot of classic novels, and I've read, uh, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide, and... You know, all the Michael Crichton stuff, like Will was just talking about, um, and some really weird avant-garde stuff, and history books. So I do a little bit of off-reading. Uh, most of my writing has been horror or fantasy, which is weird because I almost never read fantasy. Uh, I'm getting back into it for obvious purposes uh, since I'm planning on writing something pretty epic but I don't I don't know why I just ne I feel like most of the time by the time I hear about a fantasy series it's already been beaten into the ground by modern society and I'd rather read something that everyone doesn't know about and constantly talk about like I didn't hear about Game of Thrones until the show uh, I didn't hear about um, geez just about everything now that I think about it uh, and yeah, I, and everything else is just like, oh, there's super long serial novels, and then the author dies before he finishes them, and I just can't deal with that. I, I don't want to read 47,000-page novels. Uh, I did read the Dark Tower series, so maybe I'm a huge hypocrite, but... <laughs> uh, and I'm planning on writing something like that, which is which I find really bizarre, but maybe I can bring something to the table since I don't have a lot of references in my brain. Maybe I can, you know, have a clean slate somewhat, not having anything, you know, cliches burned into my psyche that I'm going to end up putting on paper. We'll see. I don't know what's going to happen. That would be me and my sci-fi writing, usually about 10,000 words in, like, this seems familiar. <laughs> That's because this part's from that story, that part's from this author. Well, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes reading too much is a bad thing. And, you know, I can't decide if if I ever do publish my series of fantasy novels and somebody says, oh, it's an Asian Game of Thrones or it's an Asian Lord of the Rings if I would be horribly insulted or you know, actually be, you know, feel good about that. I haven't quite decided where I land on that. I guess if thousands of people are reading it, I guess I'll probably be fine, and I'll get over it eventually. <laughs> Once the paycheck comes in. Right. But, yeah, I, uh, I do not write what I read except the occasional horror stuff, which I don't really write a whole lot of horror anymore, uh, unless I come up with something really dark and psychological. Uh, when I was growing up, I used to write a bunch of, like, slasher horror where people just are constantly being killed for no reason. But the horror novel that I'm writing now is extremely dark uh, and not in a lots of ghosts and people getting their heads cut off way, but like a psychologically upsetting kind of way. So I'm interested to see where that takes me. It's 
probably good that you're doing it now at your age rather than back in school because nowadays you would get suspended from school and there would be a whole uproar. And you'd oh, be I spent many a day in the society. guidance counselor office. Hmm. Well, as for me, like, as a musician, you would think like, poetry would be something I would uh, I would read quite often, but it's not at all, which is a shame. Because you would think that would kind of uh, really help guide uh, uh, lyric writing, but uh, it's ultimately not how that works. But, Fantasy, steampunk, manga. Those are my like. Those are my uh, uh, main go-to's for genres. Mm. So far, uh, so far, like the main things that I've uh, that I've like uh, written in any particular links have been. A like cyberpunk and fantasy. I wouldn't mind getting more into cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is fascinating, but it's a little too futuristic for me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do my research. Where does one uh, where does one begin to dive into uh, to cyberpunk? I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to look at my stacks. <laughs> I know I have some in my piles. I just have to skim through and see what there is. I feel like um, Bayon Publishing I know has something for that subgenre, but I'm blanking on the authors offhand. If any of our listeners or viewers have any suggestions into uh, diving into to, uh, cyberpunk, I'd love to hear it. When I finish reading uh, wetware and software, I'll let you know if that's considered cyberpunk <laughs> or just something really <laughs> grotesque and inappropriate. Because based on the cover, I'm going with the latter. It's, it's <laughs> cyber something, that's for sure. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm yeah, talking what? about... Wetware, I think I know what kind of fluid they're talking about. <laughs> it might almost what? be worth bringing those on our weekend gathering just so we can all bask in its glory. I'll just do a reading. I read it aloud. It's <laughs> not very long. I could probably read it in an hour. So it's next. It's literally next on my list. So I'm, There's I'm your NSFWN episode. Yep. Just a lot of reading. There may be some copyright laws <laughs> that we would bump into if we tried to do that. Uh, Wait, would we be safe from that? Could uh, with the fair with fair with the fair use act be able to uh, save our butt from uh, from that since we're not making any money off of our podcasts? Well, that would protect mm. us from being sued for yeah. a little bit, but mm. we would get a cease and desist letter probably. Ah. Uh. For safety's sake, we could not do the entire book, but we could easily enough do like the first chapter to give listeners a taste of what it is. Right, and then we would have to provide commentary. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't just be able to read it outright. Oh, I think we could easily provide commentary. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll, uh, while I'm reading it, I'll highlight some passages. There's going to be some comedy gold in there, I'm sure. As long as it's not Eye of Argon level descriptions, then we're in trouble. <laughs> this Eye of Argon, is it referring to something that I think it's referring to? It's a infamous short story that was submitted to a short story contest ages ago, and it is just, no one can read it with a straight face. It, like, breaks every single rule that you should not break the way they break it. <laughs> That's kind of neat. I still want to do a reading of it with the crew, just because it's hilarious, but we have never gotten around to it. 
uh, we should possibly uh, maybe we could put that on our to do list uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we can add it to the ever going list. See what actually sticks. Are we all getting together to, in person next weekend? Uh, two weekends, I two believe. Two weekends, okay. Yeah. The eighteenth, ish. Seventeenth, eighteenth, something like that. Yep. Something like that. Yep. Oops, that's not the chat. And that is the Eye of Argon. But I'm only posting it in our internal chat, so viewers and listeners will have to do the Google search themselves. But it comes right up, because it is online everywhere. Now, when you say comes right up... Save it for the NSFWN episode. Is there a chapter three and a half? There may be. I was just scrolling through and I, I saw chapter three and a half. Well, that's how long it is. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. Yep, there is a chapter three and a half. Yep. <laughs> There's also a seven and a half. So there are two chapters that have half chapters in them. It It is something special. And chapter chapter seven is two paragraphs before going in chapter seven and a half. Mm. I've read short chapters before, but I mean, I once read a chapter that was a word, but huh. alrighty then. Maybe for episode sixty nine or something, we'll do excerpts from it on the show. Or who knows, maybe we'll end up doing it during Nano when all of our sanity has left us. <laughs> Anything is possible. Alright. I would roll into the highlights reel, but Justin stole my thunder on that by already showing the website. Uh-huh. But the website is in the show notes. Post it over at fcwriters.com. You can check it out. It is kind of worth perusing because it does have pretty much everything in there for all the various typewriters. All right. I guess that means it's time for writing prompts. So time to shove everything over into one window and then go over to the correct tab. Don't show anything inappropriate. Hit the screen share button, hit the other screen share, hit the right screen share button. And the third one, and there we go. All right. Every week we provide various creative prompts because we like instigating productivity in everyone else. We like to share in our insanity. Specifically, we provide ten one-liners, ten one-worders, a combination of Rory's story cubes, a musical writing prompt, a musical prompt, not writing prompt. <laughs> write on it, I guess, but not its original intention, and an artistic prompt. Uh, seeing as I always end up with the last page, you three can fight it out for the first three options. I'll take the one-liners. Uh, I'll do the one-worders. I, I muted myself thinking I was unmuting myself when I called one liner, so I guess I'll do the story cube. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you just muted yourself to swear at us. <laughs> oh, the story cubes are, uh, are tilted in the right direction this time. Hooray! We're going at a moderately lower resolution than usual. Uh, blame. What was I in? Illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so the ten one-line writing prompts this week are Close the God's Bedamned Door. I'd help you, but there's a puppy sleeping on my legs. And I actually remember where that came from. <laughs> You're not supposed to have three shadows. What house has more mood lighting candles than emergency candles? I can see my mansion from here. She wanted... Falafels. Falafels? Okay. Typo. That, yes, that is... She wanted falafels. She wanted falafels, and here we are. Maybe she had a lisp. Mm. 
Are you going to the convention this weekend? Happiness is a blanket heated by two. Aww. Ew. Is this flammable or inflammable? You were supposed to provide the drinks, not the desserts. And those are your ten one-line writing prompts for this week. Come on. Scroll down. You can do it. There we go. All right. Your one-word writing prompts for this week are as follows. Destiny. Outside. Unleash. Resume. Prepare. Anatomy. Shards. Monocle. Lizard and commercial. So have at them. Your story cubes are uh, a small child with a shadow that happens to be a horrible uh, beast monster creature. You have a bridge over a brook. You have a guy pushing against what looks like maybe a wall. It's hard to tell. Uh, we've got a map where X marks the spot, presumably, and not the origin of the tra travel. We have a guy chomping into something, maybe, maybe a giant pizza that you can hold with two hands. I know I've done that before. <laughs> uh, a guy laughing hysterically uh, so hard that his head is vibrating violently. <laughs> A circus tent, a crab, and one of those uh, scales, uh, scales of justice, but can also be used to weigh things that are not intangible. <laughs> and scroll down. Come on. You can do it. Oh. There we're we go. Very musical this week. Yes. All right. Your musical writing prompt for this week are quarter note F, quarter note A, eighth note D, eighth note E, quarter note D, quarter note E, quarter note A, quarter note F. So F A D E D E A F. Interesting. I'm curious if Calvin actually recognizes where that's from. Yes. <laughs> Just wait until next week. The artistic prompt for this week is <laughs> The Legend of Pig <laughs> Island. <laughs> Hard to do that straight face now. Those are your creative prompts for this week. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but apparently it's hilarious. As always, if you create anything based off of these prompts, we would love to read, listen, or see it. You can send us a copy or the URL where we can check it out to our email address, which is wordninja at fcwriters.com, conveniently at the bottom of each page. But it is not a hyperlink, since it's just a funky PDF. So you actually have to type it out. And then off of screen share. There we go. And then back to the show notes. What do we got next? What do we got next? Scrolling down some more. Hey, productivity highs and lows. And everyone filled them in beforehand so I could conveniently post them to the website. All right. Uh, we'll just roll down the list. I'll kick things off. My highs and lows for this week have been, I have survived the latest round of Doom Work, which has been a very stressful high. And I have a feeling that one is going to stay on the list for the rest of the year, the way things are going. Mm. Hopefully with the survived part. Uh, the painful high for this week is I have resurrected my exercise routine. I've kind of taken a uh, following from Natsu from the Fairy Tale podcast who has been obsessed by the game Destiny, where every time he does something silly or special or whatever, he does 10 minutes or something of exercise so he can get into shape. I've been doing it every level or every time I finish a game, and it hurts. But <laughs> theoretically, it's worth it. And my low is the Nano ML paperwork has begun, or not, as the case 
more accurately is I need to get on that this week because things are rolling whether I like it or not and I need to get on top of that. Hey, isn't Nano next month? Shut up. Uh-huh. Hey, don't we have that uh, Nano intro thing next week? No. <laughs> Wait, is that next week? Uh, or is it the week after? I hope it's the week after. No, I think it's the week after. You're right. Yeah, it's two weeks. 21st, but you and I need to off the air get our F, effing S together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, before that, it's Will's turn. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've written more of Roommate. I'm hoping that I may actually finish this chapter this month. And that it'll be start of a trend of me doing a chapter a month again. I'd count that as high. Yay! Mm-hmm. I also remembered that uh, I need to edit more Not Suitable for Word Ninja podcasts because I think we went through the backlog of two that I made, so now I have to make more. We did, and I was going to ping you about that off air afterwards. But I, I remembered. I remembered. I don't remember the... We post them on the 15th, right? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. So, uh, yeah, I, the high is that I remembered before having to be t- reminded. <laughs> A um, mere hour before. <laughs> <laughs> Still oh! Counts. I didn't put it in there, I had not much else, but I have been drinking more water, so I guess I got a healthy high, too. I was feeling really dehydrated the past couple days, so now I'm just drinking water. I think that's been a trend with a lot of people lately, myself included, so good on you. The past couple days, I was, like, really dry. I was getting really bad cotton mouth, and my fingers were getting pruny, so I'm like, I'm just going to drink water. (laughs) Yeah, the weird humidity spells that we've been getting in Connecticut have finally passed. Mm. Mm. So, there you go. All right. That means it's Justin's turn. For me, the work of Doom turns out it's not going to be as bad as we thought. Uh, Would you like some of mine? mm, Well, I'm going to help you with the uh, ML stuff, so that should help relieve some of it. Although not your official work of Doom. But either way... Work of Doom, not that bad. I can manage it. Uh, We're ahead of schedule right now, and uh, after talking to the customer and telling them that they are insane, uh, (laughs) they backed down on what they wanted, and which is good because they didn't provide us enough information to start yet, which would have been complicated. Uh, But either way, everything's all set now. We should be good. Uh, Second high, uh, we bought a typewriter, or I bought a typewriter. Uh, as and you your can wife see, looks too disheartened. Hardened. <laughs> I'm going to try really hard when I get it tomorrow to not immediately try to have sex with it. That's going to be my goal. <laughs> that is not how you clean it. <laughs> that is not good lubricant. <laughs> is that on your six? Yeah, is that on one of the nine domes? Will? Don't have sex know. with a typewriter. Yep. <laughs> When writing adult fan, adult fiction, do not make love to your writing apparatus. <laughs> That's not how it works. Uh, and uh, my low probably would be my apartment is still a mess because I've been working a lot and not doing a whole lot on the weekends besides being passed out from all the work that I had to do. But, uh, yeah, and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better next week because I'm not going to be in Connecticut next weekend, or this weekend. <sighs> we'll, we'll see. I'm getting it done, <laughs> slowly but surely. And I guess that means it's Kelvin's turn. All right. So I managed to uh, finish editing the uh, backlog of photos that I had to uh, sort through. Uh, part of which uh, was from work. I had to go through 1,220 photos, water, watermark them, and then upload them to our website. Hmm. But I got it done. So that mm-hmm. is uh, between those and other photos that uh, that I had laying around that needed editing. Uh, that I say that uh, that is a definite high. 
Um, most of that editing I got done on the nine-hour train ride from North Carolina back to New York. And speaking of that trip, uh, I went down to North Carolina this past uh, this past weekend. It was, uh, it was a pretty emotional trip, but my mother and I made it through, and we're doing okay. So that is the other high for this week. And uh, other than that, I really don't have anything else to speak of, really. <laughs> uh, actually, one random news piece that I completely forgot to put in. Uh, Calvin and Justin will be familiar with this, but Armchair Shotgun from Brooklyn Book Festival. Yes. They just had finished an Indiegogo campaign for issue 5, apparently, uh, back on the 5th. They just made it over their goal. Yeah, you know, it it stinks that I only got the email, like, six hours before it was over. Yeah, because same by here. By the time I got the email, it was already over. And I was like, <laughs> I really would have liked to contribute to that. But I guess we probably weren't on the mailing list in time. I, yeah. I think we probably just got on the mailing list. Very probably. Recently. Because I got it with about six hours to spare as well, but yeah, uh, I got it the night before or something, so I didn't actually get it until it was too late. So that's a shame, but, but uh, I'm glad they succeeded. Yeah, full coverage writers did provide a little bit to it, so we may be able to get back in touch with them again at some point. Cool, which would be nice. They seem like uh, good guys. Yeah, they are definitely our type of crazy. Let's see, that's all I got on my end. Uh, well, I guess we can talk about events. There's enough coming up, aren't there? Uh, the end of this month, hey, Rhode Island Comic Con. Dun, dun, dun. October 31st to November 2nd. Conveniently in Rhode Island, or inconveniently, depending on where you live. Like me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, myself, Will, Ed, Calvin will all be there. Justin has been given the illustrious position of running the first weekend of nano events. Hooray, and soon to take over them entirely. <laughs> and this is actually chronologically out of order. That bothers me. So let's fix that. Oops. On the 21st of October, going back in time a little into the future, we're doing a NaNoWriMo info session. So basically NaNoWriMo 101, what to expect, some... Some of us who have done it before, what we've experienced, what works, what doesn't, how to handle the various forums and whatnots on the website, that type of stuff. It is going to be a local event only, but depending on how it goes over, I would like to do a recorded version for all our nano participants who are viewing or watching this, viewing or listening this. Just curious. English. I can speak it. Uh, what time is that event happening? Uh, Tuesday the 21st at 6.30 p.m. at the Stratford Library. That is actually an event I would like to go to, but because I have to work that day, I'd be cutting it very close. Yeah, Stratford's a little farther up than New Canaan or those areas, so... You'd have to factor in a little extra time as well. But if we can coordinate it off air, we can try and make it work. All right, well, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. But until then, all of November is National Novel Writing Month. If you do not know what this is yet, you should go check it out. NanoRimo.org. It is a ridiculous contest or challenge, not really contest, that you should participate in. Join us. It is fun. And those are the 2014 events that we have for this year. We are already working on 2015 events because we are crazy like that. <laughs> and because people are already demanding that we reserve space and put down money and whatnot for certain events. So, so if you want to... Demands. If you want to check out stuff as it as we figure it out, it's all in the show notes, fcwriters.com, Word Ninja's live page. You can check out the latest episode on the homepage. It's all there. And 
Hey, we're all out of segments. How'd that happen? Guess that means that it's about time to wrap things up. Gasp. And we're early. Double gasp. Oh, impressive. Yeah, Triple we done. we just <laughs> powered through things. Well, I guess we got to have a short episode every once in a while. Yeah. Balance yeah, things we're out. Just, uh, efficient and packed with content now. Yeah, Back let's go with that. <laughs> Yay for professionalism. Yay. Speaking of professionalism, if we entertained you in any way, shape, or form, we would appreciate it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can follow all of our other future episodes and endeavors and crazy shenanigans that we post up there. We have a lot of them in the works. If you are listening to this because you're on the audio podcast, congrats, although this is probably pretty far in the future for you. Uh, to find our YouTube channel, it's just wnja.us slash YouTube or search for full coverage writers in YouTube. It will come up or Word Ninjas Live. It's all there. If you're more for social media, you can check us out on Twitter at FC Word Ninja, Tumblr or fcwordninja.tumblr.com, Facebook, facebook.com slash full coverage writers. If you want to go all out, we do have an Etsy store where we have all sorts of buttons and bookmarks and stickers and ninja cubes and other adorable little abominations to get you writing or creative in general. Uh, you can just search for Full Coverage Writers on Etsy or it's etsy.com slash shop slash Full Coverage Writers. And all of those links are in the show notes that we have previously mentioned, so you can just click on them right then and there to make it nice and easy for you. And with that, it's time to tell our viewers and listeners just who we crazy people were anyway and why they should listen to us. Uh... Yeah, I guess we might as well go down the list. Makes it easy. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, I am Charles, your instigator of literary productivity, insanity, and whatever else I feel like at the time. You can check me out off-air on my personal Tumblr, fancypantswolf.tumblr.com. That is NSFW-ish. Basically just uncensored. I'll tag anything NSFW, but it's pretty few and far between. You can also track me down on the Fairy Tale Podcast Monday nights as Mokarov when I am not inundated with work and doom and drama and whatnot. And everything else is just in the show notes to track me down. How about where people can find Will? Well, like our fearless leader, you can mostly find me on Tumblr at my Tumblr page at darkom.tumblr.com. It's spelled D-A-R-K-H-O-M. It is to be, um, I post not safe for work content as well, but I also tag it. So if you have the proper filters or blockers on, you won't see it. If you want to, well, no, that'll be fine. We're only doing one. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, next up is Justin. Uh, yeah, so uh, I've actually set up my new accounts, but there's no content there yet. So there's no reason to go there. So for the last one more week, I'm going to hold off on pimping all my crap. But this is on recording now. We're going to hold you to this. That's fine. Nope. Done and done. People can go back and listen to this and say, hey, you know, on episode 62, you said this. So we shall see next week. I guess I so. look forward to it. Rounding us out is Calvin. All right. Uh... You can uh, you can find me on Tumblr at instacal.tumblr.com. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at ccwii. Eh, pretty simple. <laughs> and we do have other various places that you can track us down, all in the show notes that we have said on a dozen or so occasions already in the last half hour. So go check them out. So you can stop listening to us repeat it. All right. That is a show. All right. Thank you for tuning in for episode 62 of Word Ninjas Live. Tune in next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time for episode 63, where we talk more about typewriters and probably panic a bit more about nano because <laughs> it is coming up. 
Hooray. <laughs> but until then, have a good night, everyone. Until next week. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.